She's the founder of Black Minds Matter, a nonprofit dedicated to celebrating black minds, supporting educational excellence, and promoting the development of high quality school options for black students. Innovation needs to come into the space of public education. Every kid in this country should have the opportunity to go to whatever school meets their needs. It sounds like a novel idea, but it actually is not happening. And most exciting of all, she's the new mom of a four month old. Denisha Allen, welcome to Pop Wisdom. What do you want written on your gravestone? Well, I wouldn't have a gravestone. I want to be buried as a tree. I will have maybe a plaque on my tree. <laughs> so what will be the plaque on your grave tree? <laughs> I want it to say compassionate, driven, mission oriented. It's part of like a, a job interview on your grave tree. <laughs> No, those are good, those are good. What challenges your patience the most and how do you overcome it? I would say people who are not on board with anything that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who disagrees with me. <laughs> well, not necessarily disagrees with me, but who don't understand what I'm working toward. With Black Minds Matter, with, in, like your yeah, work, with, your, with, with work. your passions? Yes, exactly. Who can't see the bigger picture of things. And maybe some of that is I can't communicate those thoughts. I'm never like, oh, this person, I hate this person. It's like, okay, I see my end. That is hard. And it's like, why can't you understand these good ideas? Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's healthy to be like, I'm probably not doing as good a job probably as I should. Probably not describing it the best way I can, but I'm also frustrated that you don't get it. What's your favorite dish to cook? Mac and cheese. My mac and cheese is really good. And what I, kind of cheese do you use? Everything. So growing up, did you ever have Velveeta? That stuff is disgusting. <laughs> I was going to say it was That's, my favorite. <laughs> really? That is like poor man's meal. And so like, I do not know. Velveeta is nicopa. <laughs> it's yeah. not technically cheese. It's, it's like, not. If you look at the box, it says processed cheese food. Right? Mm -mm. <laughs> cheese flavor. That. Yeah. It does melt great though. No. <laughs> and some of it comes already melted in like the, what is that? No. Do you have a favorite video game or board game? I love board games, so I have a lot of board games at my house. I like Candyland, Life, Monopoly. All the 80s childhood classics. That's right. But yeah, I'm building up my board game collection. That's going to be like my family's pastime, and they're going to hate me for it. But we're going to have family night. Just the other night, we were playing I Declare War, because that's like the only card game that I know how to play. I recommend Spades. Well, I'm black, so I should know how to play spades, like, <laughs> but I do not know how to play spades. <laughs> Why is it that you're black, so you got to play spades? Yes. I, I'm missing out on a whole thing. Here. Well, okay, so African-Americans and spades, like, go hand in hand. Like, at cookouts, you pull out the cards, and that is the game you play, spades. And oh, I didn't know this. <laughs> really? No, well, no. you would be invited to the cookout before me because I don't know how to play spades. Maybe you can teach me. <laughs> this may or may not be applicable yet. The question is, what's the most dangerous thing you've let your kid do? But he's four months old, yeah. so what could get... <laughs> yeah, he's four months. I, yeah, nothing right now. Yeah. I want him, I've, I've already mapped out his whole life, so... <laughs> He's gonna be a, a pilot because you can get your pilot's license at the age of 16. So he's gonna be a pilot. He's also gonna swim in, do scuba diving. And Scoop so fun. that could be kind of dangerous. Oh, engineer. So that's what he's gonna do, like to make money, but. So you're going to raise a kind of James Bond like That's character. right. <laughs> that's right. How have you most damaged your kids, either physically or oh, mentally? Oh, oh. you're gonna make me cry because I was trying to cut his fingernails alone, like oh, by so myself. Stressful. Yes. And I clipped his skin. Uh, he didn't bleed, but I that took that really bad. I was just like, I'm harming him already, and he hasn't even been here that long. Like my goodness. The worst is yet to come. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It'll probably be your husband that'll do the most damage. <laughs> well, actually, I'm like the reckless one with him. Very so good. I'm like the one that's like carrying him like a little football. I'm like, you're so cute. <laughs> Will you just come with me? Do, do, do. And he's like, be careful with my baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most valuable thing you've learned from your children or child? Again, 
I bet you already got some lessons. Yeah, well, my son is four months and his memory is like not that extensive. Like he's not like, no, he's still... oh, I remember what happened yesterday. Life can be kind of stressful sometimes. And like you look at this little baby who is not keeping all that baggage from yesterday or 10 minutes before. Like right. this is just like. They're just in the now. The in the now, the power of now. And then they have those moments where you think they're smiling, but something else is happening. <laughs> right? Even the reflex smiles are like, you are stressing me out right now. And these reflex smiles are giving me a little bit of happiness. We can learn a lot from just little, little babies. <laughs> What's your favorite children's book? The Giving Tree. I kind of equate that to my godmother. She gave and gave and gave and gave and taught me you know, what it's like to not give as much, you know, that book is pretty sinister, you know, <laughs> but I learned a lot from her in that book on boundaries. <laughs> when it's like, okay, I, I, I'm done with the giving now. You took it all. Exactly. <laughs> What's the most dangerous thing you ever did as a child? <laughs> I was going to say riding my bike. I don't know. I was pretty clumsy. I'm still pretty clumsy, <laughs> but I got into a lot of bike accidents as a kid. You were allowed to walk around without adult supervision though, like walk to school. Oh and... yeah, absolutely. Yeah, t today this would put your parents in child protective services. So yeah, you know. no, right, no. <laughs> I was called what was like free range kid, you know, now it's like such a hippie thing. Oh, we're gonna let our kids be kids. So I, yeah, I would be considered free range as a kid growing up. If you could relive one memory with your dad or father figure, which day would it be? Now I'm using my brother because he is my father figure and he's been there for me. One year we got together at his house to have Christmas. We spent the night, we put cookies out for Santa, cookies and milk out for Santa by the Christmas tree. We grew up poor, so we knew Santa Claus was not real. Like <laughs> nobody's gonna give credit to Santa when they struggled to buy these presents, you know? It's like, no, we bought those. And it was so cheesy because we knew, you know, we already knew like Santa did not give us these gifts. And he was like, you gotta go to bed. You gotta, you know, go to sleep or you're not gonna get any presents. So, and then the next day, one of the first presents we opened were like matching sweats suits typical 90 sweatsuits like <laughs> that material that goes like <laughs> yep yep now when i look at those pictures i remember like that was so much fun but those sweatsuits were <laughs> were terrible yeah they were kind of <laughs> ugly what is the number one lesson you learned from your dad well i might take a different take at this the number one lesson i've learned in fatherdom presence is key my biological father was not in my life and my stepfather was not that great but I had a lot of father figures who were present. My brother took me on my first date when I was 13 years old. We got all dressed up and he showed up at the house and you know, opened the doors for me, opened the car door. One of the things he told me was, if a man doesn't treat you this way, then he doesn't deserve you. How did that come about? I'm gonna take you on a date so you yeah. understand what this is supposed to be like. Yeah, a few days prior, that's exactly what he told me. Something along those lines. Like, I'm gonna take you on your first date. You never have to think about how a man is supposed to treat you, you'll know. So my husband, like, he opens the door and sometimes I'm like, guy, I can get out of the car myself. Let's just go, let's just go. He put the child lock on me. Anyway, back to your question. I think that being present, even if you're a kid who doesn't have a father and someone else to be that role model in that person's life, yeah, that makes a tremendous amount of difference. That's an amazing story with your brother. I've never heard of that before. I told you, he it's... thinks he's my dad. His wife will actually be like, oh, your dad. And I'm like, that's not my dad. <laughs> All right, that's it. Denisha, thank you for being on Pop Wisdom. <laughs> Yay, this was fun. This was fun. If you enjoyed this video, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Denisha Allen. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.